so let us now go through the assignment so this assignment is about designing these protocols and simulating them okay so uh, it assumes a basic familiarity with python and it uses a library called simpy for doing the simulations so the lab is located at this url so let's see so this is the web page for the lab it has instructions about how to install simpy and uh, assuming that you have installed python and the simpy library in python let's proceed okay so what essentially we'd be doing is we will be using a template which consists of this uh, system okay so recall the template that we had of the sending side and the receiving side so there is the sending application which calls the function rdt send on the sender and there is the receiving application which has a function named deliver data which the receiver calls when it wants to deliver the data to the receiving application okay then there is the rdt sender and the rdt receiver these are the blocks whose logic we have to incrementally develop simulate and test okay so these are equivalent to the work that the transport layer does and finally we have the channel so we, let's say we have two streams one for sending data packets and one for sending acknowledgement packets okay so this assignment provides you with a python template the template consists of these following files which you can uh, download and store in the folder so i have already done that so let me go through the code okay so it consists of some python classes to model each of these components and some other uh, code so let's go through this code uh, one by one okay the first file is called packet.py it models a single packet so let's see what this file has so let's see packet.py okay so packet.py implements a python class for a packet so let's see what does a packet have okay this is a very simple class for a packet what a packet has is three data members one is the payload so a packet has some payload that is what does it contain then it has a number because remember in some of the protocols we needed to number the packets right so it has a variable called sequence number and it has a flag called corrupted which could be true or false so the init function is uh initializing all these variables at the beginning when the packet object is created and in the beginning the packet is not corrupted and there is a function here called corrupt so if this function is called on any packet object the packet becomes corrupted so self dot corrupted this corrupted flag is set to true and the payload is garbled up okay so payload payload is now unrecognizable earlier the payload could have been data or it could have been ack or nack or so on and now the payload is garbled up so who calls this corrupt function who corrupts a packet the channel corrupts a packet so you would see that in the channel class there will be a call to this function corrupt based on the probabilities of corruption and finally there is this little function to print the contents of a packet it just prints what is the sequence number what is the payload and whether the packet is corrupted or not okay so this is the packet class all right so let's see this another small class called test packet this is a very small python code to actually just test the packet so how do you include the code or a class de definition from another file you just say from packet import packet so note that these two files have to be in the same folder okay so we create the first packet with some sequence number and payload and we print it create the second packet and print it and now we corrupt p2 and again print p2 so it is just a simple code to illustrate a uh, python class right so let us run this simple code test packet okay so how do i run this i open the terminal and uh, or you could use any python terminal maybe like a jupyter notebook and so on okay so let's run this so i am using python 
So notice that the first packet has sequence number 3, payload A, then this is packet 2 and now when packet 2 is corrupted, the payload is gone. It's garbled up and corrupted flag is set to true. So that's it. Python uh, class for the packet is very simple. So now let's move on to the next, next thing. So we saw a packet, right? Now let us see what is a channel. Remember when we discussed about the channel, we said that the channel has two parameters. One is the probability of corruption. What is the probability with which the channel will corrupt a single packet? Okay. And second is probability of loss. What is the probability that at which the entire packet will be lost? So there are these two parameters. And in addition, it takes some time for the packet to reach the receiver. So that is a parameter called delay. So how do you code this into Python? So let's see this file called channel.py. Notice that it is implemented using a library called SymPy. And uh, I will not be going into details of SymPy, but if you are interested in learning more, it's a very useful library. You could just go on to the website of SymPy. This is the SymPy web page. Okay. It's a Python library for doing discrete event simulations. Okay. And it has lots of examples and tutorials and so on. So let's head back to this file channel.py. Okay. So this is a SymPy model for an unreliable communication channel and it has a probability of corruption PC, probability of loss and delay. Okay. So let's see how this is implemented. So first of all, we have class unreliable channel. Okay. And it has these parameters PC, PL and delay. In addition, there is a variable called ENV environment. This has to do with SymPy. Okay. So ignore this for now. And then we have a pointer to the receiver. Why? Because the channel calls a function RDT receive on the receiver. Similarly, the act channel calls the function RDT receive on this sender. So it should know, uh, it should have a reference to this object. Okay. So that is the pointer to the receiver and it has a name. Okay. What are the functions? that the channel should support. It should have a function called UDT send. Who calls UDT send? This RDT sender calls UDT send on the data channel and RDT receiver calls UDT send of the act channel. So the channel should have a function called UDT send. And what should happen when that function is called with a packet, the channel should take that packet then it may corrupt it with some probability or lose the entire packet with some probability and if the packet is not lost then after some delay amount of time the packet reaches the other end and when that happens the channel should call the rdt receive function on the receiving side so for example if udt send is called then the packet is created on the channel then with a certain probability, the packet could get corrupted, it could get lost. But after a delay amount of time, when it reaches here, the channel calls the RDT receive function of this receiver. Similarly, for the act channel, it calls the RDT receive function of this sender. So essentially, the behavior of these two channels is identical, right? So we don't have two Python classes. We just have one class describing the function. And we create two objects, one for the data channel and one for the act channel. So let us go through this code for the channel. So you have these parameters, PC, probability of corruption, PL and delay, and a pointer to the receiver, a reference to the receiver. Okay. Now we have this function UDT send. So it takes the argument, the packet to be sent. So what happens when this uh, is, is called? A copy of the packet is created. Okay. And a SymPy process is started which is deliver packet over the channel after this delay. Okay. So this is a SymPy process. So to understand this, uh, you may need to refer to the SymPy document, but let's consider for now that it creates a separate uh, process 
for simulation and that that process is here so what should happen when this is called okay so we create a copy of the packet and check if this packet should be lost so generate a random number between 0 and 1 and check if it is less than the probability of loss for example if probability loss is 0.5 and you generate a random number between 0 and 1 and if that number happens to be 0.2 then this condition is true and so the packet will be lost so this is how we um, test for this okay and so if that happens the packet is lost and this is printed the packet was lost else the packet is not lost so what do we do we now check for corruption so we generate a random number between 0 and 1 check if it is less than the probability of corruption if yes then corrupt the packet call this packet dot corrupt function which we saw earlier what does it do it sets the corrupted flag equal to true and it garbles up the payload okay and now we print the packet was corrupted now there is this yield uh, statement yield self dot environment dot timeout delay what this does is it's a simpy construct it schedules an event after a delay amount of simulated time okay so if delay was two units then after two units of simulated time this will be triggered until then its execution will be paused here okay so imagine that execution happens one by one one by one and when it reaches this statement it is paused until this condition evaluates to true and when does this condition evaluate to true after the given delay okay if the delay is two units then this it pauses here for two units and after two units of time this statement will be triggered again and after that this function will be called self dot receiver dot rdt receive so notice that now we are calling rdt receive with this packet so if you look at the template again if it was a data channel that we were modeling when udt send was called the packet was copied copy of the packet was created then with some probability the packet was lost if not lost it was corrupted with some probability and then an event was scheduled after a delay amount of time so after delay amount of time you assume that the packet reaches here and then we call rdt receive right so that's what's happening so we call self dot receiver dot rdt receive this is just the pointer to the receiver whose rdt receive function is called so now this is the channel similarly we have code that describes rdt sender and rdt receiver what are the functions that rdt sender should have it should have a function called rdt send which the application calls it should have a function called rdt receive which the channel calls okay and it should have this behavior whatever we discussed in the state machine previously similarly rdt receiver should have a function called rdt receive so finally we have the classes for the sending application and receiving application what does the sending application do it periodically calls rdt send and the receiver receiving application has a function called deliver data which the receiver calls right so now before we look at the code for each of these modules let us see how we tie this together so we saw the code for channel.py so where do we actually create the channel okay so suppose we have a python class for each of these objects we have a python class for the sender a receiver the applications and the channel we finally tie them together in this file called testbench.py so testbench is just a test bench where we instantiate objects of all these things we connect them together and start the simulation so let's look at this file testbench.py okay so let me go through this code okay first of all we import the classes where the code is declared okay the sending application the receiving application the unreliable channel and so on and we create a simulation environment this is a simpy construct okay this is a way to create an environment 
and we will populate this environment using the objects that we defined previously. So let us create the objects one by one. So we create an object called sending app, which is of the type sending application. And we pass this environment, this environment as an argument. Then we create a receiving app similarly. Okay. So the sending app and the receiving app are these two objects. Similarly, we create RDT sender and RDT receiver. So here is the RDT sender. Here is the RDT receiver. And then we have two channels. One is the channel for data. It is unreliable. Uh, it's of the type unreliable channel with the value PC initialized to 0, PL 0, delay equal to 2 and the name data channel and similarly the app channel. Okay, so this is it. Now let us connect the objects together. What do I mean by connecting the objects together? Remember, the sending application has to call a function RDT send on the sender. So sending application should have a pointer to this object or a reference to this object, right? Similarly, the sender should have a reference to this data channel object. The receiver should have a reference to the act channel object. So this interconnection, okay, pointing out one object to the other object can be done here. So sending app has a variable called RDT sender, which just stores a pointer to this object or a reference to this object. And we initialize it to the actual object. Similarly, RDT sender's channel variable is initialized to channel for data. Channel for data so receiver variable is initialized to RDT receiver. Let's see this. Channel for data is this. It should have a pointer to this object. Okay. And that, that is the RDT receiver. So channel for data so receiver object is initialized to RDT receiver. Okay. Similarly, RDT receiver should have a pointer to the receiving application to be able to call this function deliver data. So that is done here. Okay. And now similarly, the backward path for acknowledgements. So the RDT receiver should have a pointer to this ACK channel. So RDT receiver dot channel equal to channel for ACK and channel for ACK dot receiver equal to RDT sender. So channel for ACK also has a receiver variable which is initialized to this RDT sender. So we have done done with the initializations and now there is this command to run the simulation. So it is running the simulation for 100 units of time. Okay. So notice that this time is simulation time. It's not actual time. It doesn't correspond to seconds or minutes on the computer actually. It's a simulation time. It's just there is a time variable and it is incrementally it's incremented okay so let's say you run a simulation for a thousand units of time it may run instantaneously on your computer it doesn't correspond to any real unit of time okay that's why it's unitless so it's just simulation time okay so this hundred doesn't have any units it's just value of the time variable so maybe you start with t equal to zero do something, simulate something, then increment t, further increment t and so on. So it's a simulated time. Okay. It's unitless. So with that said, let's go and see the code for the other, other objects.